After years of reactionary creative struggles trying to establish itself, the DCU has been struggling to its last breath, bombing with Black Adam and two different red color-coded heroes. But the DCU finally promises to have a new lease on life by embracing the iconic blue of its historic logo. My name is Ren and this is my review of Blue Beetle. Welcome back my fellow DC fans. Let's be honest, it has been a rough year for us, hasn't it? We're not even a marquee superhero like The Flash carrying both the dying DCU and the future DCU on its back can connect to general audiences. Nobody will expect a C-lister like Blue Beetle to be the universe's savior. And yet, it's August 2023 and we meet recent college grad Jaime Reyes, who returns home full of aspirations for his future, only to find home isn't exactly as he left it. As he searches to find his purpose in the world, fate intervenes when Jaime unexpectedly finds himself in possession of an ancient relic of alien biotechnology, the Scarab. As a frame of reference, I love Blue Beetle as a member of the Young Justice series, and he plays really well in the Injustice games, but I personally have no love or excitement for this character. To my surprise, it is a refreshing take on the origin story that throws away every notion of universe building and the now overly saturated multiverse and focuses on telling an intimate, character-driven story that is smaller in scale but soars all the more for it. All thanks to director Angel Manuel Soto, whose story and direction confidently anchor Jaime's intimate journey as one of heritage, family, classism, and community. This is not the kind of film that is narratively or thematically concerned with building the multiverse or exploring what connects to the wider DC universe it has. It entirely focuses on a richly cultural, character-driven story all about family, which in itself has become kind of a pun. And while the plot structure is a bit too familiar, it is the kind of superhero movie, the kind of origin story we don't get anymore. I was surprised all through this film by what it chose to focus on and what it chose to bring to the table. I mostly connected to Angel Manuel Soto's storytelling because he is the kind of storyteller that wears his references, his inspirations on his sleeve, and he allows them to build the world and flesh out the characters and relationships. In that sense, it reminded me of Creed 3, where there's a ton of anime flair to the visuals and action and this film has it in spades to the point that it almost feels like an 80s movie and the way it looks and the way it feels in this sort of innocent storytelling that is so unfamiliar these days when it comes to superhero movies there's a ton of power rangers inspired visuals when it comes to the superhero outfit and the way the scarab connects to jaime and even Jaime's age, his connection to his family, how his entire family is a part of this crazy adventure. And they bring not only great laughs, especially Nana, who demanded applauses at certain points, but they bring so much art. And they are so much of what makes Jaime Reyes such a likable, charismatic, and endearing protagonist in a star-making performance by Sholo Maridueña. He is excellent, and he keeps being billed as the DCU's first hero, and I sure hope they don't throw him or his family or his world away. My favorite aspect of Blue Beetle is easily its thematic depth and how it feels like Sam Raimi Spider-Man meets in the Heights, how it discusses gentrification through our hero and Susan Sarandon's Victoria Cord, who brings all the ham and chews the scenery to no 
end. I love the contrast of the poor lighting, the desaturated colors and the bright, luscious, lavish Leons of the city being overtaken by the same technology that eventually overtakes Jaime. But it's because of the family around him and his cultural heritage that makes Jaime his own hero and such an endearing character for such a story as this. But Jaime is not only likable, he is an ass kicker. I love the action choreography in this film. It is spectacular. The director is clearly inspired by action animes of the 80s and 90s. He's inspired by Power Rangers. He grew up essentially with the same stuff I grew up with, so I naturally gravitate to this style a lot. It's not the biggest spectacle we've seen, but it's the most detailed and fantastic to watch on camera choreography the DCU or EU has ever delivered and on top of that bringing a little bit back of the 80s inspiration the score for this film is excellent the synthwave score and a visual flair Angel Manuel Soto brings to Blue Beetle are only the cherry on top an endearing origin story of a hero honoring those who shaped him into becoming someone worthy of inheriting the Scarab. And as much as I love so much of what Blue Beetle has to offer, not everything works. And because there is so much focus on Jaime and his family dynamic, there isn't enough time to create genuine friction between Jaime and the Scarab itself, Kajida, voiced by Becky G, who is a former Power Ranger, so there's another connection there. Which is a shame, because not only is the Jaime Scarab conflict a visual representation of Jaime's inner demons, but it could have worked as to create more interesting friction between him and his family, as the Scarab is trying to take over, trying to make him a different person that does not have the same shared values and sees the world the same way his family does. Which is maybe the one thing missing in that family, is that genuine genuine interesting conflict they have the heart they make you joyous watching such a united unit of a family but there isn't a lot of conflict there in that same way the film also falls short in exploring the villain carapax in a compelling way where the concept is so much more promising than the execution where they manage to flesh him out just enough but by the time they do, it's already too late for you to be emotionally invested, where you can see all the thematic dots connecting before they even get to the point of his story, where I feel a lot of what we get from Carapax as a character should have been sprinkled in as compelling parallels to Jaime as he goes along in his journey. So I love so much of what Angel Manuel Soto does with Blue Beetle, and I love how he does it. I love what he is inspired by, not only by his experience as a storyteller, as a member of the Latin community, as someone who grew up in the 90s, to tell such a universal story of becoming, but it just falls short of its potential. And speaking of things that don't work, there is a very interesting mid credit scene in this movie, but you can completely get out of the film before the final end credit scene, because that is an absolute waste of time. Still, for as little hope, absolutely zero, that I had for Blue Beetle, it is a refreshing and welcome take on the origin story about a hero nobody saw coming, carrying so much heart, so much joy, so much pizzazz, really, of what the DCU and the DCEU has needed for so long. So as I go into my final thoughts on the first, kind of, DCU film, it's time for you to start the conversation in the comments below. Let me know what is your most anticipated project in the DCU, what is your favorite movie in the DCU, and if you want to see more of my reviews on the DCU, there's a playlist for it right up here. If you just want to talk more movies and TV, this is the place to be, consider clicking that subscribe button, and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. Blue has always been DC's color. 
and damn does it look great on Blue Beetle. An infectiously charming punk rock coming of age tale with lively characters, heartfelt themes, and dazzling visuals and choreography. A universal story on forging one's own path and DC's best of 2023. I'm giving Blue Beetle a B plus. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to start the conversation in the comments below with your thoughts on Blue Beetle. Was it a big surprise? A big disappointment? Anything and everything down there. And big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. And I'll be back very soon with more videos. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.